Hello there. In this video, I want to show you some mods for Baldur's Gate 3 that just improve the overall experience in slight little ways without impacting the gameplay too much. So these are just things that fix minor things about the game that you didn't even know needed fixing. And I'm actually very confident when I say this, I believe by the end of this video, you're going to have found at least one mod that you're not going to want to play the game without anymore. So let's get right into it. The first mod that I want to show you, and possibly my favorite mod in this entire list, is called Native Camera Tweaks. And what this does is it allows you to zoom in much further than you're able to by default. So for example, we can zoom in on this dwarf's face right here. As you can see, the beard is getting bigger. You can see the beard, we can see his nose hairs. That's how close we can get in. Um, <laughs> not that you would want to, but uh, this mod is just insane for taking screenshots and also inspecting armor pieces. Uh, it's incredibly immersive. You can check out characters in much more detail. And I don't think I'll be able to play the game without this mod anymore. Additionally, it's useful for checking out high ground for ambushes. So there is a bit of a gameplay implication here um, because you can look up. And for example, if there was an archer up here, which would be incredibly mean, but uh, you would be able to see that in advance much more easily than if your camera was stuck in this perspective. This next mod is pretty much just as good and it's called WASD Movement. And this is exactly what it does. It lets me move around with WASD on my keyboard. This feels very familiar to me because that's how I used to run around in Dragon Age Origins, if any one of you remembers that game. You can easily switch between the movement modes too by just pressing caps lock. So now you can see I'm moving the camera around with WASD and I can click to move around again. Now there's some problems with the implementation. So for example, when I click, I can't easily switch. Like right now I'm in WASD mode, but it's only gonna lock in whenever I reach the end of the waypoint. So that's like a minor thing that I wish they would change. Uh, but other than that, I think this is really well implemented. The next mod is called Ethos Immersive UI and you might've already noticed it or Maybe you didn't because that's the whole point of it. Because what it does is it hides the UI. It's contextually hidden and as I hover over the UI elements, they're going to be shown, which is super immersive whenever you're running around with the improved camera and also WASD movement. Um, because tell me that this isn't 10 times better than exploring the game in this point of view with all of the UI enabled. In my opinion, this is just fantastic and I wish I'd had this on my first run. This next mod fixes a major problem that I had with the game when I started and that is the availability of different containers. The game sets you on your route with a few different containers that you can pick from and you can actually loot bags throughout the game and use them for yourself. Uh, however, most of these are very generic and you can't really tell them apart. The mod bags, bags, bags adds a bag full of bags which contains exactly 21 bags with different icons and so on. What you gotta do is you talk to this NPC called Aaron in the Druid's Grove, of talk to him and he has these bags that you can buy for 254 gold. You can see that he's added a bunch of uh, bags in here. So for example, we have a cloak bag, a glove bag, a helm bag, shield bag and so on. Additionally, we have other containers such as the jewelry case. We have potion, a potion box, a scroll case, bits and bobs, keepsakes box. And what's great about all of these is the fact that they are very easy to identify. So for example, the potion box just looks like a potion box. Like look at this icon, it's great. Um, we have valuables. Uh, we have the die sack to put dies into, poisons, uh, arrows, books, it's fantastic. And you want to know the best thing about this mod. It also makes it so just like the default alchemy pouch, some of these will automatically collect items. So if we have the arrows container in here, this is going to automatically take all of the arrows that you find throughout the game. The next mod is also visible on screen right now, and that is actually better containers. And this just makes these bags a bit wider by default. I think by default, I can't even make them smaller with this mod, but I think the default size is like three times five slots, which is microscopic if you're trying to find items or if you're trying to sort your inventory in any meaningful way. So better containers just increases the size of the default bag 
uh, and makes it so you don't have to manually increase the size every single time, which I really appreciate. So both of those mods together just make inventory management a lot more enjoyable. The next mod that I want to highlight is actually also available from the NPC called Aaron at the Dritz Grove. So when you talk to him, you'll see that he has a full stack of every single type of die available in the game. This is available right from the start. So if you want to go for a specific look with your dice, then you can do that. Uh, you can just buy these. Uh, I want to buy one ideally because we're going to need it to actually showcase the next mod. So this is called Die, Die, Die. The next mod is called Silver. Everybody Dies Unlimited Dying. So if we open up our inventory now, by default, if we were to die a gear piece, the die would disappear. But with this mod, we actually get unlimited dying. Now, personally, I really want to look good while adventuring. So I really appreciate this mod because let's say you wanted to go for a full set of black armor. You would not be able to do that unless you found multiple of whatever die you're looking for. Not to mention that even if you found them, it would get really freaking expensive. Now, I don't think dies have a major impact on the gameplay here. So I think having this mod is kind of a nice workaround to just have your party always look good. The next mod I want to talk about is the Ring of Minor Rituals. You can find this in the Druid's Grove, again from Aaron. Uh, who sells this ring for two gold and this gives you access to four spells those being speak with dead detect thoughts disguise self and speak with animals all four of these are now ritual spells that you can cast whenever so you can put this on you can see we immediately get access to them and we can just use them we can put the ring back off and we can put our main ring back on whenever we feel like the reason why i think everyone should have access to all four of these spells at all times is because they're just plain fun Talking to animals is really fun in this game because they have their own voice acting. You shouldn't be forced to use an action to cast them. Um, you can skill your character in such a way that these become ritual casts. But again, that takes away from other parts of the game that other people might not want to. Speak with Dead is also really useful, especially in Act 3. You're going to probably make a lot of use of it. Disguise Self can be useful, um, like you can see right here, because I can turn myself into a smaller character or even smaller than my dwarf and actually access some areas that are locked off by default to tall characters because there's these cracks that you can click on where only small characters can squeeze through. Unfortunately, I don't have any of those nearby, but you'll know what I mean soon enough. So having this ring is just super useful and I think there's no reason not to use this. Now the keen eyed among you might have already noticed another mod in this image and that is visible shields. By default, these shields are not visible uh, for whatever reason. Now, I think this has to do with clipping. So for example, we can see this NPC back here and his shield is kind of clipping almost through the ground. <laughs> but uh, there's other situations where like the weapons clip through the back and you can see Shadow Heart running around here. We take a look at her, you can see the, I think that's a Morning Star that she's carrying. It's kind of clipping at the back through the shield. But personally, I wanted to start playing as a fighter and not being able to see the shield, even if there is a little bit of clipping, was just kind of a bummer to me. So this is a nice and simple fix that lets you make shields visible if that's what you want to do. This next mod fixes something that bothered me a little bit about the visuals of the game, and that is the visual effects that kind of loop around your character at all times. Um, you can see we have a buff on ourselves right now, and just having something tiny like this isn't really a big problem. But there are buffs that I really want to hide. So for example, Bless. By default, it would leave a huge ring around your character that is going to stay permanently until the spell is gone, until the buff effect is gone. With this mod, this ring is going to disappear and you're not going to see it anymore. So this is just a nice little tweak. Uh, if you prefer to actually be able to see your characters and not look like a freaking Christmas tree the entire playthrough. This next mod is called No More Blood and Dirt, and this does exactly what it says. It removes the blood and dirt effects from your character. I found these to be extremely annoying whenever I got back into camp after a long day of adventuring. Obviously, we got into combat, we ran around a lot, so all the characters are mega stank. Um, unfortunately, they don't really seem to like showers, so what happens is that <laughs> they're going to switch into their civilian clothes, and they're not going to wash and they're going to talk and a lot of the dialogues that you're going to have are just going to be in dirty clothes covered in 10 liters of 
enemy's blood. Using that mod for me was just a tiny little boost to the immersion personally, although I did like the blood effects out in the open world. And if you do like them, there's a mod that's called Less Blood and Dirt, which actually lets you just reduce the amount of blood and dirt accumulation as well. So that's another option that you could go for. Alternatively, you always have the option of using your resident cleric to use create water and just give your stanky party a shower, which yes, that does actually wash blood and dirt off as well. The next mod that I want to show you is called No Inspiration Point Cap. Now, if you don't know about inspiration points, um, these are in your inventory up here. And basically, you get these as a little reward for playing to the background of your character. So if you do something that a character of your background would naturally do, then you get an inspiration point. These can be used on re-rolling ability checks. And by default, they're capped at four, which many people don't even know about. So if you're capped at four, you're running around, you get an inspiration point, that inspiration point is now lost. So what the mod does is that it removes this cap and makes it so you can accumulate more than four inspiration points, uh, which can be super useful because you no longer have to worry about capping on them. You no longer have to worry about using them on the ability checks where you really don't want to use them. This also has some large gameplay implications though, because if you can't hold yourself back, you would have the ability to just stack up 30 of these and then use them on like one really important ability check that you really, really want to win. Uh, if that's what you want to do, then go ahead. I personally just prefer to use it uh, to not have to worry about this inspiration point cap at all. And finally, the last mod on our list is called Customizers Compendium NPC Options Unlocker. And this does exactly what it says. Basically, there's a bunch of NPCs around the world that have hairstyles and faces that we obviously don't have access to. So for example, we can choose Shadow Heart, go around with Shadow Heart's face, even though I feel like, even though she's a disciple of Shah, she would probably have something to say about that. Now, more importantly though, there's a bunch of hairstyles that you get access to that are actually really cool. Um, there's this one, which could make for some fun RP if you have kind of an evil character in my opinion. Uh, but there's also other ones that are going to be shared by your companion. So you have to make sure... Is that Astarian? That is Astarian's hairstyle. <laughs> so you see, actually, Astarian's hairstyle works really well on an elf. Um, but you just have to make sure that um, you don't accidentally pick a companion's hairstyle and then there's camp beef over who's stealing whose style. That's all you gotta make sure. Um, but not all of these are companions... Um, hairstyles, just NPCs that you'll meet throughout the world. If you really like one of these, just go for it. Um, I think just having the options of using all of these is fantastic. And that's actually it for this video. If you found this even slightly helpful, please consider leaving a like down below so other people can find it too. Now, thanks for watching, and I hope you have a lot of fun playing this game. Peace.